Congratulations are indeed in, in uh, order as we celebrate Women's Month. Former Public Protector Professor Tulima Donzella has been appointed to the United Nations Scientific Advisory Board and the board provides insight on sectors including science, technology, ethics, governance and sustainable development. And we're joined now by Professor Madonzella. Good afternoon to you and congratulations indeed adding to your so many other accolades. Very well decorated uh, a uh, former public protector. What does this appointment mean to you? Uh, uh, greetings, Cindy, and thank you for the privilege to be here. The appointment shines a spotlight on the work we've been doing at the Center for Social Justice at Stellenbosch University around a marriage between policy design science and, and technology. So the first thing is really affirming that work and providing it with a platform to be mainstreamed. At a personal level, I am humbled, of course, and, and I believe that this affirms the work I have been doing since I left my job as public protector and provides an opportunity to have our approach systematized globally. Mm -hmm. But it also provides an opportunity for us to learn from cutting edge science across the globe and to bring African perspectives into this melting pot. Yes, but uh, uh, just looking up your uh, very extensive uh, CV, uh, Prof, in the sense that you had been uh, one of the architects of the Constitution and that you had also drafted or contributed to the promotion of Equality and Prevention of Unfair Discrimination Act, the Employment Equity Act, which is now a topical issue again, and the recognition of customary marriages, and, and those have evolved, but you had been in the forefront of uh, the democracy and constitution that we celebrate today. Uh, for many who might say, look, it doesn't benefit me. We've, you know, uh, what, what is your response? Well, it doesn't immediately benefit everyone, but the marriage between science, technology, and policy design is extremely important. For example, Cindy, you have mentioned my past, and my past my past um, has enabled me to be involved in constitution drafting, law reform, etc. But none, not all of that has translated into improved lives. We're, what we're doing at Stellenbosch University and what uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres is doing is address that missing link between the ideals of, for example, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and experiences on the ground. And it just boils down to intentional policy design and the use of foresight tools to consider unintended consequences of well-intended policies. I'll give you an example of the policies that were designed to keep the spread of COVID-19. Using our experimental tools at Stellenbosch University, we predicted virtually all the negative unintended consequences of the COVID-19 rules, not for South Africa only. We collaborated with colleagues in Sweden and other African states to predict that this one size fits all and this lack of consideration of unintended consequences was going to throw some people off board. And virtually all of our predictions were confirmed. Mm. And, and, and precisely that, when you look at the pharmaceutical sector as well, and we're often told that Africa is the new frontier where there's uh, tremendous opportunities uh, if only there is political will for us to implement existing policy, uh, monitor and evaluate what the scientific advisory board now, and particularly to uh, narrow the gap between the poor and uh, you know those that have um, how is this going to benefit the country and I know I'm being self-serving here but uh, with your presence at the UN uh, Science uh, Advisory Board 
I believe that the vision of the Secretary General is to match decisions with vision. The UN has a grand vision of a world that affirms the humanity of everyone, a world that ensures sustainable development in terms of the environment and in terms of people. But reality on the ground often differs from this. That applies to our country as well. We have one of the grandest constitutions ever, but reality on the ground is a bit of a Potemkin situation. And I believe that our role would be to look at the policies that are being planned, the cutting edge science that is emerging, the technology that is being mm -hmm. designed, and consider whether there may be unintended harm and advise accordingly. But also advise on how do we harness science and technology to address the social ills in society. And that's our specialty. That's, that's yeah. our specialization at Stellenbosch University, the harnessing of data science and technology for predictive impact assessment. In other words, instead of waiting until we've harmed people, you harm them in a social lab, and then you realize, oh, older people will be affected negatively, children, women, etc., in a social lab. And then you tweak your policies to make sure that nobody gets harmed, nobody gets thrown behind. But more importantly, your policies reduce existing disparities or inequities. And Professor, would you, would you agree that the unintended consequences, albeit that these are noble virtues in the Constitution, have led to uh, the poor uh, immigration uh, border controls, where we're sitting now with the undocumented uh, foreign uh, nationals and uh, some involved in illegal activities, and there's just no end to it. I don't even think with the statistics South Africa are able to give us a, a ballpark figure that is accurate as to how many are undocumented. Do you think, because of the preamble of the Constitution, that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, we have then became a magnet uh, and uh, you know, for, for foreign nationals, especially undocumented? I don't think so, Cindy. I think our constitution certainly does say South Africa belongs to all who live in it. But it does make certain distinctions between nationals and, and non-nationals. For example, it does say um, free the potential of every person. However, it says improve the quality of life of all citizens. And even the human rights in Chapter 2 of our Constitution, there are human rights for everyone, and there are those human rights or responsibilities imposed on the state for its own people. I just think it's just been poor policing, poor intelligence, and also a weak social contract, because who employs undocumented immigrants in favor of them to undercut local unskilled labor. It's our own people. And therefore, we just need to improve the social compact. But we should not improve our social compact in such a way that we reinforce anti-immigrant sen sentiments, especially Afrophobic uh, anti-immigrant sentiments. We need a balance between creating a society that helps others but without harming the local communities. And, We're going to leave it. Uh, I beg and, your and pardon, Professor sword. Madonsela. Uh, I do beg your pardon. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. Again, congratulations are in order, as you can add to your many accolades and well-deserved indeed. That's uh, Professor Tuli Madonsela. Uh, she was appointed to the United Nations Scientific Advisory Board.